incredibly well positioned for this top eight, but clearly it is doing just fine as we are underway here in the quarterfinals. It is a glistener elf here for Ross. I'm really happy we get to see this matchup again. There was, it was pretty interesting, the interaction between these two decks. I like how low to the ground the land still deck is. There's a lot, I think the difficulty here is that the card stand still is just not very safe against an Infect deck. Yeah. Skull and Tarn will be sacrificed here by Fan. He will search up a Volcanic Island. Shuffle up the deck here in just a moment. Did drop a few cards Throw here. some cards on the ground yeah, for you know, good luck. Do. Dude, <laughs> dude, you got to. But actually, I, after we do sort this out. first feature match, this was a written one, so fortunately there's no video of it. I picked up, I remember I shuffled my deck and I threw about 15 cards <laughs> off the table when I did it. And yeah, that was, I was a little nervous you for it, you can like, say. You don't seem like the type who would be nervous. Oh, no. man. You probably like a scape shift deck or something? Um, I don't know. I think at the time it was Naya. Okay. I know. That was that was a strange that was a strange time in our in my life there. Everybody Playing, gets I played Venge Vines. I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. We saw a lightning bolt get dazed there by Ross. He's gonna play Pendle Haven now and get in for two infect. He's even gonna get his infect counter out and ready. So Lamb with two infect. Eight to go here for the boss, and it is Lamb's job to make sure that doesn't happen. He's gonna sacrifice a scald in tarn, search up the land here. There's Volcanic Island. Tom Ross. The strength of the Infect deck, and I really kind of, we've come to see this as the deck has gained more popularity, really is the fact that they can win Counter Wars by how cheap their spells are. You see that one drop creature in today's, that's, that's the kind of stuff you see out of Delver. But Tom's deck is even lower to the ground than that. You see cards like Invigorate. There's a lot of the cards of the deck just cost zero. There's a Wasteland. That's here to take care of Ink Moth Nexus. Ross will draw a copy of Vines of the Vast with. That's timely. If you haven't seen Lamb fan play all day, just a, a note on his lands here. He's got a really big style. He blacks out the art, the background art, and then he whites out the borders. So he's thinking, like, you said a wasteland. And, you know, my first thought is, well, that's not what a wasteland looks like. <laughs> it's a very different approach. See the hand here for Ross. A little land heavy. It looks like two fetches over there, a Forcible and Invigorate and a Vines of the Vastwood. For Tom, he's able to keep some slower hands that don't kill right away because the game is going to go long. Mm -hmm. I imagine he would like for it to go short. But there's a lot of interaction available, and Sphere's going to activate and will attack. Moth Nexus. It's going to put him up to three. No Wasteland use there from Lamb Fan. And it's all about timing with that effect. That's the big thing. Yeah, he wants to dodge Vines of Vastwood. Yep. We're also going to play Misty Rainforest. And this is a really big fight of timing. Tom has both Invigorate and Vines of Astwood, so he's got the le nearly lethal, well, he has lethal pump if he goes for it. And then his last card's a Force Build. It, doesn't have, it does not have a blue card to accompany it yet. Yeah, that's the big issue here. Going to search up a Tropical Island here with the Misty Rainforest. Also note, Ross doesn't have another Infect creature in his hand either, so no blue card for Force Build, no backup Infect creature. Kind of, uh, kind of all in on this Ink Moth Nexus here. We'll see if he wants to fire it up or not. You see, Tom is going to leave mana to hopefully get this guy activated and vines it if Lamb ever goes for the Wasteland. He's going to pump. Wants to see if maybe there's a sudden shock over here. The card that you actually see is Counterspell. Here's the attack. And Lamb's going to have to go for the Wasteland. Yeah, we're going to have a bit of an exchange of resources here. It looks like. You can tell that he's considering wasting this. And he says, OK, I'll take two in fact, so no move. He'll sacrifice. Interesting line for Lamb. I did not expect him to play it this way. Not that it's necessarily wrong. Had he gone for the waste on there and was willing to play Counterspell, he would have gotten the Ink Moth uh -huh. off the table. So he has taken four points of poison for free right now, which is a commodity. You know, it's not... You can't let them actually keep hitting you. It's, it adds up very quickly. Looks like the draw was a copy of Spell Pierce. Excellent draw. Let's see a couple copies of Mistress Factory here. Gonna play a Misty Rainforest for now. There's actually some merit to Lamb just using his Wasteland right now if he's worried about some sort of effect. Mm -hmm. Right. Now it's not active, so Tom can't even vines it. I like that play a lot there. Ross will draw a card. It's another land. Verdant Catacombs will come into play. Back to Fan, we will go. Sudden shock the draw. There is a factory. He'll pass the turn back. Noble Hierarch has shown up to the party here for Ross. Those are Fan's win cons now in hitting play. So 
ideally, this is how Fan wants the game to play out. They're both playing lands. Tom can't really get an offensive going. So now let's see how good Fan's deck is at closing out the game from here. Stifle was the draw. Yeah. Things do get a little bit interesting now. Now he can start actually getting a little bit more aggressive. And he will. He'll fire up a factory after playing one. Stifle is a card that Fan boarded out last time in this matchup. Can't imagine he's too happy to see one. Ross will draw another land. See if he wants to hold one or not in case he runs into a brainstorm. He is flooding pretty badly here. Yeah. What it does let him do is he can now has enough mana where he can actually just hard cast this forcible and still continue to play cards. It's not the game that Tom wanted to have happen, but it will work in a pinch. Fire it up. Send it in. And this is something we always saw Fan earlier in the tournament. Whenever he attacks with these factories, he swings with one and then pumps a lot. There's an invigorate. It might actually be hard cast. Nice, I'll give you four life. Never mind. Tom thought about it briefly there. There's no, just no point. Yeah. And if I'm fan, he could fight over this, but the patient blue mage approach here would just be to let it happen. Yeah, that's and I, exactly you know, what does happen. Yeah, you traded one for one. That's great. You have more. It's not like it's your last factory. Nope. Well, she'd probably be happy trading that for an invigorate. That's one less invigorate you have to worry about. Wasteland the draw, that's going to come into play. That's going to go after the factory. Well, Fan does have a stifle and will use it. Not a lot of stifle targets, so. Oh, so this sense. is a real good one. Yeah. Tom could hard cast Force of Will at this stifle. Boy. And he's considering it, too. Yeah. Get a long look. You see the vines, the forest, and the misty rainforest, and Wasteland will be countered by stifle. And they'll just pass the turn back. Both players trying to pick their spots, but both being quite patient. Saving that stifle, that counter spell for a rainy day here. Lamb continues the attack. It's uh, five, eight turns, so seven more to get the lethal damage here. Down to 14. There's another wasteland. Pass the turn back over to Ross. Ross draws another copy of Vines of the Vastwood. The land cell deck really doesn't win the game quickly. No, 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 no. <laughs> but this is exactly how I feel. Lamb wants the game to go. He's probably happy with how things are going right now, and if he works his way into a standstill, he'll be even happier. Yeah, it's interesting because even though this is exactly, this is his game plan, it still doesn't feel safe to me, per se. Like, it's good, don't get me wrong, but it's, he's not totally safe here. It's a block with Noble Hierarch and a Vine to the Vastwood, so it's defensive. I don't think Fan wants to lose his second factory, so he's probably, he, you're gonna get some counter spells for this one. Yep, there is a counter spell. Ross says, let's try it again. Believe Fan has a red card here. Yeah, it's shut and shock in his hand right now. He has a Force Will and a Spell Snare, too. So he definitely has some options available. Of course, Spell Snare can't take care of this, but yeah. Force of Will removing Spell Snare can, and we might just see Sudden Shock, though he'll start by sacrificing both the fetch lands and going down to 18. Yeah. Even if you sat, even though Vines of Vastard kicked costs two, you cannot Spell Snare it. It's still, still a one-mana spell. Snow-covered island and a volcanic island is what Lamb will search up. I think it's, and this is where I love Sudden Shock, because Fan doesn't have to worry about, well, what does Tom have in response? This just wins. Yeah, you have nothing in response. You can't. Back Ross is where we're going to go. He'll draw a card. It's a copy of Berserk. He'll just have to pass the turn back. Fan will quickly untap and take a draw. And remember, he can use Berserk to try to kill the factory. <laughs> That's what it's going to do. You called it. <laughs> yeah. And I believe you can do it after damage, but the land, fan wants none of this. Yep. There's a counter spell at Berserk, so Berserk being used as a removal spell, not going to work either. That's totally in the color pie. I'm sure that's how they imagined the card would be used when oh, it was abs printed. Absolutely. Forest the draw. Ross flooding very, very badly here. Looks like he may just have to pass the turn back yet again with just a force will. Deploy the force, kick it back over to Fan. Fan will draw. It's a copy of Brainstorm. He's going to fire in for two more. It feels like it's 2005 right Did now. Did crack all his fetch lines, but just patient, 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 patient. No rush. We got just a couple more hits with this factory. Should do it. Crop rotation no. was the draw here for Ross. Of course, that card can go and find Ink Moth Nexus. But there's a wasteland on the table, so it's not even that great. Yeah. If he hadn't answered a wasteland, he could actually ambush this factory. He could go get an ink moth, activate 
Ink Moth, Pendlehaven it, block and kill the factory, but your right waistline is really putting an end to all of that. Lamb is just going to keep doing what he's doing, which is drawing blue cards and attacking with the Great. factory. Great, more <laughs> blue cards. Sign me up. This is a dream come true for you. Yeah. Well, it looks like someone might slow down a little bit. Aha, uh -huh, that's really. the reason why. One of my favorite senses would be like, I have seven cards in my hand and they're all blue. This is a standstill. <laughs> Ross is going to sacrifice for in catacombs, search up a land so he can hard cast a force of will. It's not all the standstills out of Lamb Fan's deck are safe. This one, however, is. It's like we're in a time machine, back to an earlier time in Legacy, where things were more honest with their burn spells and their counter spells than the standstills. I like this deck. It's, it's very clear what standstills' game plan is. Yeah. You, you counter some things, then. Then you draw some cards. Force will then take just care repeat of it. it. Ends for two. Puts you down to five. Will fan. Time to untap. Ross going to draw a card. Copy a spell pierce. Shelf life on that one may have expired. Yeah, the really thing about the Infect deck is it really doesn't play well after turn six or so. Some of these decks, aggro combo style decks, can reload, but Infect just isn't one of them. It's another attack here for two. Ross may be considering a card like Crop Rotation here. He's going to go reaching for mana. There is the Crop Rotation. Sacrifice a fetch land here to pay the cost. And he will go searching. And there is an Inkmoth next. A quick update for you guys on one match. Dan Jordan with Blue Red Delver is up a game over Royce Walter playing Storm. Walter fighting the good fight, but it is going to be an uphill climb for him. Absolutely. So crop rotation has resolved. Pink Moth next is in play, but you do see the Wasteland staring that in the face. And looks like we'll be using a Wasteland. There goes Ink Moth. So now Factory will come through. Two damage will come through. Ross is down to three. He'll draw a card. It's a copy of Invigorate, not what the doctor ordered. He'll pass the turn back over to Fan, who's going to cast a Brainstorm. Two more hits to go on Fan's side. Should bring him into game two. <laughs> Remember, we started at a nice 16 life when this progression <laughs> yeah. began. You see, it is slow and steady. Uh-oh, we've accelerated the clock. There's a factory. Oh, wow. Yes. Pretty hard. So now next turn, it could be lethal. Yes. This is an end of turn brainstorm. You draw. Wow. You put it into what, play. Look at this aggressive line here. <laughs> he's he's, he's going to pump it. Oh, man. There's the pump. And that's three. Absolutely, Lamb Fan is going to win game number one here over Tom Ross. Land still up a game over Infect. As we take a look at the sideboards now, we will start with Tom Ross and his two Crows and Grips, a Spell Skype, a Sylvan Library, a Submerge, a Nature's Claim, an additional Force of Will, a Spell Pierce, two Hydro Blast, a Blue Blast, Umzao Shite, a Necropita, a Bajuka Bog, and a Wasteland. When we saw this match earlier, we saw Sylvan Library be quite good. Sylvan Library was boarded in, and Nature's Claim was boarded in last time. Now, it'll be interesting to see what Tom does, because just like I'm not sure Lamb Fan has played this matchup from the Landstill side, I'm not sure Tom's played this one from the Inspect side. They, I think both players could be improvising here. So now that they've learned what the other guy does, and they've had you know, a couple hours to sit back on this match. I wonder if any of them will change their approach. We'll see on the other side of things for Lamb. He's got two Engineer Explosives, four copies of Relic Progenitus, two Surgical Extractions, a Fluster Storm, a Red Elemental Blast, two Pyroblasts, and then three copies of Pyroclasm. Earlier, we saw Pyroclasm and Engineer Explosives come in. He had all sorts of things. He had Engineer Explosives, Relic, Pyroclasm, Red Blast, and Pyroblast all, wow, all okay. after board. That, to me, was, it seemed aggressive. I don't know if he had full copies of all of them. I doubt he did. Um, I think... It's kind of a throw the kitchen sink approach where you, you play a couple one ofs. You are a blue deck, so one ofs. There's actually a real argument made to having some one ofs, just have extra versatility. Maybe now that he has a better crystallized idea of what he wants to do in the matchup, maybe we'll see lots of copies of one card come in uh, in place of, you know, a little bit of a diverse approach. Well, we know that it's safe to board the Stifles out as they're quite poor in this matchup for fans. So you can imagine those four cards are going to be gone. And then kind of figure out what else to kind of slice out of the deck. Yeah, you're not, it doesn't sound like you're a big fan of Standstill in this matchup. Well, Standstill's really pivotal to fan strategy. So I don't actually know how many Standstills you can board out of this. His deck's already very light on card draw. And because of that, some of the times when he gets the lead, it's pretty tenuous. You know, you saw there, if Tottenham just top decked a couple Ink Moth Nexus, that game could have gone the other direction. So maybe he wants some number of standstill, but you're right. Um, it's not, he can't confidently play it because if Tom Ross has a, draws an Ink Moth, which you know, he has four of, 
Well, then suddenly Lamphant's actually behind under the standstill. He may have to crack his own standstill. And that would be bad news for him. Yeah, okay, we wouldn't really want to do that. So I, I do want to board some of them out. I was really unimpressed, actually, at Pyroblast last time we saw this matchup. It's, it's generally a good card, but I don't think you want to be fighting that way against Infection. There's enough other things that aren't blue. I'm not a huge fan. Engineer Explosives also didn't seem particularly strong. I liked Pyroclasm. That was very good when he played it. Um, so I'd want to board that in. Maybe you could Fluster Storm, I think, is a great board card here. Okay. Uh, it can counter the green pump spells, unlike Red Elemental Blast. Makes sense. Does make sense. We'll see how both players do opt to sideboard. Again, we have our other matches here where Dan Jordan, our sixth seed, is up a game over Royce. Walter, Blue Red Delver versus Storm. Jordan with Blue Red Delver up a game. Joseph, Santa Messino with Mud, our number seven overall seed, doing battle against Brian Braun to win. Currently playing Jeskai Stoneblade. That's two versus seven. And then the Battle of Phillips, Bravervin versus Schoeniger. Miracles matchup. They're still four in game versus one. five. Of course they're still in game one. One. They might still be on turn one, for all I know. It does take a little while. The question would be, is, is the game over yet? Because, you know, I mean, they could still be playing it, but, yeah. you know, has someone won? We'll see. Again, when we have updates for that for those matches, excuse me, we'll let you guys know. But we do appreciate you joining us this evening here from New Jersey. It is Cedric Phillips and Matthias Sant, also with Patrick Sullivan, Nick Miller, and Andrew Shrout, the rest of the SCG Live crew here for the quarterfinals of Grand Prix New Jersey at SCG Live. Hashtag GPNJ for your tweets. For the rest of this weekend, as, again, we did have over 4,000 players come and do battle here in the New Jersey Convention Center. We've whittled it down to eight, and in a couple hours here, we'll whittle it down to one. Yeah. And both Tom Ross and Brian Braun do in your one and two seeds facing rematches here against kind of the two odd ducks of the top eight. You yeah. know, Lamphan's Landstill deck and Joseph Santamacino's Mud deck. These were both players who went 9-0 on day one. We kind of, they played each other actually at the beginning of the day, and we kind of singled them out as, you know, these were not the decks we expected to make 9-0 on day one, and both of them ended up top the tournament. It's been a fun run for these two kind of, as you mentioned, kind of off-the-wall decks. We've seen Blue Red Delver before, of course. We've seen Miracles. We've seen Storm. Just Guy Stoneblade is a little bit new to the party, but Rudy Brisk has winning Columbus last week and really solidified that as a player in the format. But now, Land still might start to pick up in the legacy scene, and Mud could too, depending yeah. on what the result is, is of the top eight. It's so interesting. If you look at this Grand Prix. We had 16 players enter today undefeated. Only three of them ending up in the top eight of the tournament, which wow. shows just how high the bar is when you're at a 4,000-man tournament. Yeah. Some of those players, I know Michael Majors, he started off 9-0. He had a very, very rough day, too. Ended up finishing the tournament X3-1. and one. So not the desired result for him, but as you mentioned, Really yeah. tough tournament. A lot of players here. You're going to run into some stiff competition on day two. Corey McDuffie starting out 11 and 0, ended up with three losses, losing a couple rounds in a row to not make it to not make the PT this time. Still a great performance on his side. Yeah, really great weekend. But if you know Corey, all he cares about is qualifying for the Pro Tour, and he lost his winning in match in round number 15. You can see the disappointment on his face. It is definitely frustrating as we do begin game number two here. It's a misty rainforest. Tropical island is what Ross will search up, and we'll see what his turn one play is going to be. Perhaps with Cantrip. Maybe we'll see something on Noble Hierarch or an Infector like Glistener Elf. One thing we know for sure is that he does want to sacrifice the fetch lands pretty quickly because he's not want to get stifled. He's just going to cast a Brainstorm now. So three cards here in Spell Pierce crop rotation. And it looks like a daze. Two will have to go back. A lot of permission in this hand. Uh, a lot of blue cards going on, but it's not. It's a little threat light. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how this hand develops. I think only a Blight Agent, but it actually looks like the other land is copying Inkle the Nexus, so maybe a little more threat heavy than we initially thought. Yeah. Now, if you look at Lamb's fan's hand, it's a sea of red cards. Mm -hmm. Looks like a pair of Pyroclasms, some number of Bolts and or Sudden Shocks. Yeah, there are at least two Pyroclasms over there, which is just horrifying. So Blighted Agent gets to start on Tom Ross's board. Don't know how long it's going to be there. Yeah, so if you're a fan, you have to make these cards line up. You can Clasm away a Bladed Agent. You can Sudden Shock a Ink Moth. You can also just Red Blast the Bladed Agent. It was an attempt, but it got dazed. I will say I like the Blackout border on Red Blast. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. I think it looks actually fantastic. That was sweet. Some of them, I think the Pyroclasms in particular, I remember thinking those are kind of wonky. That Lightning Bolt looks cool. Lightning Bolt, yeah, the ones that are just fire. Yeah. I like those ones. No second land for Fan. Yep. It's notable. Now, this is where things get really interesting because <laughs> I think Tom is actually thinking about this. We know Tom has a Wasteland in his deck. 
Just think about crop rotating for crop wasteland. Rotate for wasteland. Get fan down to zero permanence. The, 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 you know, the big question here is how can you take advantage of it? Because if, that's let's his say, last land. Yeah, let's say he crop rotates, right? Which land is he going to sacrifice? It looks like he's going to take a more conservative approach, and looks like somebody has just, found a I'll wasteland. Just brainstorm into the wasteland. It's much easier. It's got a lot easier. Also, Sylvan Library too. The other card is a copy of Become Immense, a card that we have seen him win some games with in his Infect deck. So now things are getting mighty interesting. He's hoping that Fan doesn't draw land, but he did. It's a fairy conclave. Yeah, it is a one-up wasteland in Tom's deck, to yeah. be fair. There is the wasteland. He will use it, fire it off, attempt to take care of this volcanic island, getting the red mana off the board to shut off all these red cards that you guys can see in his hand, those pyroclasms and what look to be sudden shocks. Fan is going to float some mana. I imagine Tom will move to his attack stun. Yeah, that will clear the mana pool. Fan with no stifles left in the deck. And there is a Sylvan Library. So once again, we see Fan with these engineered explosives. He had them last time they played, and they really didn't do much work. And it's kind of it's a little stuck here, too. But it's the lands that are getting to him here, not, not the engineered explosives. Now, we talked about the one wasteland that Tom had access to draw to. But it's actually a second wasteland that he has in his sideboard. Oh, wow. Which You're he absolutely has right. drawn and is using to leave Fan permanentless. Well, this game has taken a really poor turn for Fan. Now it's just an attack for one. Now Fan has to top deck his way out of this. That is not a land. It's a copy of Spell Pierce. He may have to discard here. He's just going to play an Explosives on zero instead. Ross will consult his hand. He wants to make sure he knows exactly what this will do. But he is OK with this, as now it's time for a Sylvan Library activation. So before we had the combo dying here, we do have an update. Storm has tied it up. All right. So. I know you have a little smile on your face. Oh, he's Blue got red. only kind of. He's got to win game three on the draw. Yep. I don't like them. I'm not smiling about that. Royce Walter was able to tie it up against Dan Jordan, so they'll play a third game. Again, when we have an update for you guys on that, we'll let you know as Ross does search up a tropical island with the Verdant Catacombs. I will tell you, if the Storm player can get through this matchup and start getting to play against decks like Mud, he'll be thrilled. Updating our Miracles Mirror, our Philip Mirror. Game one goes to Schoeniger. A very, very, very skilled Infect pilot. I know most of our players here is theirs to become immense. Fan will take a look at that. It's the Dell plus six plus six spell. I like that Tom just takes the opportunity to fire this off while Fan's permanentless. I understand that like it's very hard to play this board wrong, but I like that he's just not, you know, lots of people always want to lethal with this spell. And he's just, let's get the damage in while we can. It's called Intar in the top deck. Fan gonna go down a little bit lower here, but back to Schoenegger very quickly. Very, very skilled Miracles pilot, very well known in Europe beginning to make a name for himself. And he is one of the last people I want to play against when he's piloting Miracles. He is quite good at it. Top eighted GP Paris. Top and now he's, forward even. Yeah, and now he's in the top eight here. Sylvan Library activation. And you see this is a spell skite in the Sylvan Library. This is one of those cards out of the sideboard for Tom. Yep. Protection against all these great red removal spells. Doesn't stop sudden shock though. Nothing stops sudden shock. <laughs> Remember, you can't you can't play around sudden shock. It's just all of a sudden it's it's just gonna get you. There's a Gataxian probe. Is it safe for Ross to move in? Is the question. He wants to take a look at Fan's hand. There's the grip. Two lightning bolts, one sudden shock, two pyroclasm, two copies of spell pierce. You see why Fan kept the hand. There certainly wasn't a lure to it. He had multiple lightning bolts, red blast, one land. It's a hand that could react forever. It didn't have any pro action, and it turned out to be really soft to the two wastelands in Tom's deck. Ross Ross Berserk It's going to fire up, come into the red zone. No need to try to make it a one-turn game. Two turns is plenty. Well, he can just fire it off I'll right now. He's it. got the Berserk here. This will be either a Spell Pierce or a Lightning Bolt. And Tom has, you see, he's already got the two cards ready for Force of Will. Yep. Deserve Tom doubles the power. He has it. Yeah, he doubles the power. And that is going to do it. Tom Ross is going to win game number two here over Lamb Fan. And that means they're headed to a third one. Winner of this match has the pleasure of playing its Miracles. Yeah, and we've seen Tom not scared of the Miracles matchup. Remember, his finals invitational win over Reed Duke was against a very competent Miracles pilot. Of course. As for Lamb Fan, 
I'd be, I'm interested to see how this control deck goes against the other control deck of the format. Land still, I, I can't imagine likes its Miracles matchup, but, you know, you, I, I don't think you want to be the sudden shock lightning bolt player when your opponent's playing Miracles. Well, if you know Legacy well, you know that Land fan has been playing Land still for quite a long time, and I have to imagine a player of this caliber playing this deck, he knows that Miracles exists, yeah. Maybe he's played against it over the course of this weekend, and I don't think he would walk in with a bad matchup. Though I do agree with you, on paper, it does not look pretty. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I'm not thrilled about it, but maybe it's fine. I do They're like a lot of, of the standstill. Same standstill seems sweet. Yeah. I like that. I like having a lot of Snapcaster Mages. There's That's enough counter spells to fight it. There's a lot of good things going on. Take a look at the sideboards one more time here. It looks like Lamb may be changing a couple of things up here before getting ready for game three. Ross also going to take a look as well. Things, of course, do change a little bit when it's on the player of the draw, and Lamb will be on the play here for game three. Again, this is a rematch. We have seen these players play already this weekend, and Ross was victorious then, and we'll see if he'll be victorious again. This looks like he is looking for a ruling from the judge. Just wants to make sure he knows everything that works as Lamb looks like he's happy with this configuration and shuffling up for game three. Yeah, and this is what happened last time. Tom won, Tom lost the game one both times. He is so far 3-0 and in post-board games against Fan. Fair but enough. Whatever the board plan is, he's doing it right. <laughs> that seems to be the case. To Tom's credit, he does have some nice cards to bring in here after sideboard, where Lamb just has some okay options. I haven't been very impressed at any of Lamb's cards out of the sideboard. Yeah, I, I think the Red Blasts are fine. Um, Clasm is... Actually, been it's a little underwhelming. Uh, it costs two. It's two at Sorcerer's Speed. It's not great against Infect. It's hard. I mean, not saying that you wouldn't want to board it in. It's very hard not to board in. But quick update for you guys on our two versus seven. Brian Brown to win does win in game number one over Joseph's Santa Messino. Jeskai Stone played up a game here over Mud. Winner of that match plays against the winner of Dan at Jordan playing Blue Red Delver and Royce Walter playing Storm. They are in game number three. Will history repeat itself? Brian and Tom, victors over their respective opponents last time in the Swiss. Yeah. Can they pull it off again? Tom's going to have to do it on the draw. That wasn't a problem last time. I'm fan trying to play spoiler. You saw him keep a one-lander that game. And again, it did make sense. A lot of red spot removal. Plenty of cards that he can draw out in that situation. But things did not come together very well, but also because Ross did have two wastelands that game, the only two that he plays. See what Fan can find here for game number three as we are about to begin. And Pyroclasm, among others, in his opener. There's a snow-covered island there, too. He says he's going to keep. Ross, going to give it a look over. Yeah, and not he, as sure. Yeah. It's going back. Time for six. Will history repeat itself here? Fan still looking for that post-board game. That's interesting. I mean, it does seem as though game one is pretty good for him. And the matchup does seem pretty good, too. Just the, the effect that Sudden Shock and all these Reverend Rule spells have, it, it, it's very tough, I think. I On paper, I liked Fan in this matchup. I liked it last time and even this time. Um, but uh, Tom's, got, Tom's got leeway. If I have noticed when Tom gets ahead, Life becomes really hard for Lamb fans. Yeah. Deck. It's all about getting ahead, though. If he can get ahead, it seems like it's it's pretty good. But getting ahead seems hard. Though he will keep his six very quickly. It's snow covered island to start off. Game number three. Ross, you can see he's got lands. One of them is a tropical island. He'll just pass the turn back over to Fan. Two invigorates from Tom's side. It looks like and a force of will. I don't think he has any creatures yet. Just has a crop rotation. But oh, this is interesting. You see the first couple of lands. There's a Pendlehaven. For Fan, he hasn't played a red source of mana, but a Scarling, Scalding Tarn, excuse me, comes rolling off the top. So red mana does not look to be a problem. Had it. Is this a standstill? It is. Had the red mana all along. Yeah. No big. What now, in response to this standstill, Tom could go ahead and crop rotate into an Ink Moth Nexus which could really backfire for Fan. Well, this, I mean, he's got a waste sitting line. on the table, so this is interesting to me. Well, the danger, it's interesting, right? So if Tom had another Wasteland in his own hand, he could really get, he could get the Ink Moth and then waste the waste. Mm -hmm. That would be a really good trump. 
He doesn't have too long to do that. He's going to have to just draw one of his two wastelands. Yeah. It's an update. It's a Matthias Hunt fist pump. It's Storm taking down Dan Jordan. Combo is moving on to play the winner of Mud and Jeskai Stoneblade. To be fair, I, all credit to Dan Jordan. I've worked with him before in Magic events. Dan Jordan's a great guy. Great achievement for him today. Um, top eight again, getting back onto the Pro Tour. Awesome all around. So for Blue Red Delver, it's, it, was, it was the deck of the tournament, and he's the fi highest finishing person with the deck. You see in Ross's hand right now, he actually does have a wasteland there. So things have taken a turn. Was that the draw for the turn? I didn't think it was there earlier. Maybe it was. It may have been. Yeah. It's a pretty big turn to waste the waste. Then you're going to make Fan crack his he own. He has to, right? Unless stone. he feels a wasteland of his own. Right. Then that's the only thing that changes things. This is mighty interesting. Yeah, the question with Fan is, does did he want to tap that wasteland? He could have, I guess, cast it off Scalding Tarn. This is true. Bang. That is so interesting. He could have used the Scalding Tarn and left the Wasteland open, and this may have been a bit of a hiccup, as now he will sacrifice the Scalding Tarn. He will search. It's probably going to be a snow-covered mountain as he doesn't want to get his Red Source Wastelanded. And there it is. It was sitting on the top of the deck. So now the question is, is will he maybe fire off a Lightning Bolt and give Ross three cards, or will he be patient and maybe try to use his life total as a resource? There was a lot of unknown information there, to be fair, on land side. I mean, he played a standstill onto an empty board, and time had to crop rotate into the man land and then draw the wasteland. So there was a lot of things he really didn't see coming. That said, Fan's going to take some poison here. Tropical Island. And Tom can cash in free damage for a while here. Remember, he can break that standstill. He just has to make sure he kills Lamb when he does it. Every draw step here for Lamb is going to be super interesting because I'm just looking for the white bordered card that he draws because that means it's a wasteland. Yeah. Let's see what this draw is. Not yet. Lightning Bolt. It's up to eight cards. Looks like he's going to go back to discarding. Pyroclasm. This is another time where Pyroclasm has just been really weak. Yeah. There are definitely games where it's going to be very powerful as Ross does draw a Tropical Island, puts that into play, fires up the Nexus, but there will be other games where it's quite poor, and this is one of the poor ones. Fan going to draw a card. It has a white border, but it's Force of Will. Yeah, at some point, you're going to have to break this standstill. I don't know if I want to go any higher on Poison. If the I question is, how low do you go? Up to five. Three cards is a pain, but uh -huh. it's only so, like... That's a stopper. Well, no, it's not no, flying. It I take it back. Flies. I take it back. It's just wasteland. Yep. Fire in. Maybe he goes for it now. He's got a lot of cards that work here. Six. So interesting. The standstill may have been his own undoing here. Yeah. Now he's going to make his move. That's a lightning bolt. Standstill's going to trigger. Ross is the one who gets three cards. Listener Elf, Verdant Catacombs, and a Misty Rainforest. All things being honest, not the best three cards drawn. Could have been a lot worse. That's an Invigorate. Don't forget, this is all after the damage has been dealt. Well played here, yes. Yep. So these, I'm saving his, his Nexus, but you're yeah. absolutely right. You don't want to do this in the attack step. <laughs> that would be bad news. Looks like that'll be fine for Fan. Yep. Not going to try any harder. I mean, now Ross will have to do some discarding. What's nice is that Lamb waited until Ross had seven cards in hand and then cracked it so that, uh, so that Ross would have to discard all the extra mm -hmm. cards. Still giving Ross a lot of looting, but it's not giving him raw card advantage. Tom looks like he's happy to discard these cards. Again, Lamb has been playing standstill decks for some time, so this isn't anything new to him. Looks like Brainstorm, Fetchland, Berserk is what he's preparing to discard. Your opponent's discarding Brainstorms. That's... It's not a good sign. Must have a pretty good hand. All right, he's taking Brainstorm back. He's going to discard Glistener, Alpha Berserk, and Averdon Catacombs to his discard step. All right, so now we have the, the standstill off the table, so Land can start to fight again. These Pyroclasms he has, though, just not, not doing anything good for, with Ink Moth Nexus. And straw for the terms a copy of Wooded Foothills. That comes into play as land number four and red source of mana number two. 
Yeah, I think blue source number two is really the key here. He has the card counter spell in his hand, and he has been unable to cast it up until now. Now, it makes this kind of interesting, too. It looks like he's going to play a Relic of Progenitus. His Lamb has to be a little bit wary. Or excuse me, Tom needs to be a little bit wary of a card like Sudden Shock. But as you've mentioned quite a few times, there's not really anything he can do about it. When I'm at Sudden Shock, you lose your income off. Yeah, it's just, what, it's just how it goes. Noble. Lamb will take a look. There's a Misty. Activate in Exalted Trigger. Tom's speeding things up a little bit here. I, I dare say he's going for the kill. No, he has we, a, we know what happens when he does that. I've, we've seen this before. Well, he's not going to go for the kill if Lamb takes it, but if Lamb tries to kill it, Tom's going to kill him. He doesn't. Up to eight, in fact. Lamb may still fight over this on end step. Noble Hierarchy is sick, so he's going to have to sacrifice Misty Rainforest. Interesting. I like this. Fam can bolt the Inkmoth Nexus, and actually this plays into the third copy of Bioclasm that's in Lamb's hand. It's true. Maybe he can score that two for one on creatures here. I don't know if he'll win the fight over the Inkmoth, but the Pyroclasm will be pretty good if, it, if this is Blighted Agent that Tom's going for. Yeah. Looks like they're trying to figure out exactly where they are at. Lamb looks like he wants to sacrifice the wood of foothills, but can't do that just yet. See if Tom wants to deploy the Agent or the Sylvan Library. He's going to go with the Agent. He's got fans so close. All right, I, I do think we see the end step Lightning Bolt. He's got to get that Ink Moth off the table. It does make sense. It looks like Lamb is going to sacrifice a Wood of Foothills. This looks like in response to the Blight Agent. Doesn't look like that's resolved just yet. I think it's Volcanic Island, so. We had a feeling that was going to happen. Yeah, he still has access to Bolt and Counterspell if he needs it. It's all about how you order these spells now. You see a Bolt, the actual card Counterspell, third Pyroclasm. There's also a Force of Will there. Here's Lightning Bolt. He said this needed to happen. Yeah, he needed to kill it. I like the time he chose. If he had done this during combat, Tom would have killed him. There's an Invigorate. That's how he would have killed him. Yeah, and now Fan actually has a Spell Pierce here. He doesn't have to spend his counter spell if he doesn't need to. And Spell Pierce was already getting dangerously close to not being a card. I do. Th Fan's not going to let the fight end here. He's, he's going to hit back. Question is, is it counter spell? Is it Spell Pierce? He has Force of Will as well. Yep. Those are the four cards. Spell Pierce, counter spell. Force of Will, and then the third Pyroclasm, it will be a Spell Pierce. Targeting the Invigorate. Does Tom, Tom has Force plus Blue Card, Land, and Sylvan Library. He's gonna let this go, though. Let it go. And now Relic will be activated. This will give Fan a card. Now it's time to untap. Now and it's time to draw. Can he clean it up? He's got the Pyroclasm. There's gonna be a fight. Fan can win this fight, too. Brings Pyroclasm forward very quickly. He's already discarded two, but... It's the last one. Yep. And that's, one of the, that's one of the weirder blacked out cards, I, I kind of think. It's, <laughs> it's got like this wedge thing going on. But anyway, it's power cleansing. It still works, still deals two. Tom sweep doesn't up the board. even fight over it. He just lets it go, draws a daze for the turn. And this looks like maybe what he wants to fight over. This is Sylvan Library. And because of the days drawn this turn, Tom Ross gets to win this fight. I think so. There is a days. And Still. Library is a card that gets to keep him in the game. Yeah, Force plus Blue card in both players' hands. Fan has Force plus Force plus Blue card. Tom has Force plus Blue card. Interesting. Days generally not a good draw at this point in the game, but <laughs> yeah. it was huge here. It's absolutely phenomenal here. There's Force. Remove Blue card. One card left in Fan's hand. Tom looking at his force in a brainstorm. I think you got to fight over this. Sylvan Library is too good in this matchup. Tom's going to brainstorm first. A little risque. He doesn't find a blue card. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I was gonna say, oh, and little... Ink Moth. Okay. Yeah, you fight back now. That would have been risky. If Tom didn't find a blue card there, that would have. Or a fetch land. Yeah. You know, if he'd just gotten a bunch of pump spells, that would have been real awkward. Remove brainstorm. Things like it's gonna work out. Things are looking up again for Tom Ross. Things were looking so good for Fan too. I thought the end of turn, killing Moth Nexus was beautiful. 
wins the war, draws a card with the relic, and now we have this big battle. It was that top deck days that yeah. really did it. So it's all going to resolve, and now Sylvan Library is going to be the thing that's left land for the turn. I believe was an Ink Moth Nexus. Yep, so just going to pass the turn back. Excuse me, he has an Ink Moth Nexus in his hand. He already played a land, so. He was going to get in for two points of damage. Get Well, the getting's good. Yeah, now, to remember, Lamb cannot knock this this library guy off the table. He doesn't have a way to do that, yep. so. He does have some card draw. He can draw. Some cards we have not yet to see out of Lamb are three copies of Snapcaster Mage, a copy of Treasure Cruise, a copy of Dig Through Time, a copy of Jace. These, well, we haven't seen them in any of these games. If it's Snapcaster Mage you want, Lamb has one in his hand. He's also got a Pyroblast, too. He's going to have to do something. That Ink Moth is going to kill him next turn. Well, it's certainly going to try. And because of that cracked relic, actually, his Snapcaster Mage, he does not have an answer to the Ink Moth. You see the graveyard? It's a Pyroclasm. It's a Force of Will and a Counterspell. Snapcaster, Pyroblast in hand. The draw step is a sudden shock. That one's good here, right? That's, that's all. That one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. That is, I mean, it's only justice. Tom got the days at a really good time that Lamb gets his own top deck to keep himself in the game. Oh, well, well, how things have changed in this game now. I love how Sudden Shock plays in Legacy because there's always usually such a complex counterspell fight in Legacy. It's such a large stack, and there's so much, you know, do I play around this, do I play around that? And then Sudden Shock, there, there's none of that. It's not a, no, this just works. This, I play it, and then your guy dies. There's no thinking about it. Tom's going to sacrifice his land to go get a Tropical Island. Was it? Counterbalance can actually counter it. Yep. But that's that's about it. You can will bender it. You can yes, you can unmorph your yeah. creatures with one on the stack. There are very few ways to stop a sudden shock and you could mist fire weaver. We that's that's if we want to go to Kanzatark here. Which I don't. Right. <laughs> Just gotta play Mist Fire Weaver in Legacy and then you're great. A Crozen Grip, a Hydroblast, and a Verdant Catacombs are the cards that Ross is looking at here. Now, one thing that Ross needs to do, and keep in mind, is he's at nine. He's been aggressively using Sylvan Library when these two players have played. But he is playing against a deck that does have some reach and Lightning Bolts and Sudden Shock. So this could get a little risky, though he will take the card. Going to five. That's probably the last bonus card he gets. I don't so. think he... Well, he doesn't want to go to one. He plays Fetchlands. He certainly doesn't want to go to one. His opponent plays red. That's... that's he plays Force of Wills. He can't do that. But one extra card seems great. It's an attack. There's an Exalted Trigger. He's got a sudden shock that, uh, yeah. that land. There's nothing he can do about it. Yep. There that is. Bye-bye. We'll go back this way. Ross is at a dangerously low life total. Again, Lightning Bolt, and we can't forget that Lamb has Snapcaster Mage in his hand. So again, this is a dangerously low life total. Here's an attack. There's a Crozen Grip. Can't let that happen. Well, just like Sudden Shock happens, so does Crozen Grip. Same yep. mechanic. Send it back over to Ross. We'll take a look at the top couple of cards. Noble Hierarch, Noble Hierarch, and Averting Catacombs. Well, time to change the plan. What's the lamb at? Is it 23? I don't know All if right, we here can change we go. the plan. I don't know if we can change the plan. Well, we're not dealing any infect damage for a while. Oh. There's that. Okay. He's with you. It's an attack for two. Boys, I mean, all right, so now we got him on a 12-turn clock. Well, this... Check that. that. 11. Yeah. 11. <laughs> not even 12. Scalding Tarn the draw. Cracks that fetch. will be 10. Oh, yes. Look just, at the math. Turns just whittling away here. Cataxian Probe. I like that. Info's probably pretty nice. Info's great. Digging a card deeper is great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Here is the probe. But you got to pay the mana for it. You can't go to three. Yeah, you probably want to pay. And I like this even more. Protect your hand. There aren't a, a lot of targets. Fight. There yeah. are a lot of targets for that card in this deck. So I actually kind of like this. Okay, I'll fight you back. Every good Pyroblast oh deserves gosh. a Hydroblast. Look at this Ice Age <laughs> counter war over Jataxian Probe. All over looking at the hand and cantripping. All right, we'll fine. In for two more. Put you down to 19. I like it when Hydroblasts and Pyroblasts get in a fight. There's something like this flavor to me that I really, you know, this is what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> it's pretty great. There's a Misty Rainforest. Pass the turn back. Ross is going to take a look. Force of Will. Among those cards, there's also a Noble Hierarch there. It looks like he's going to take the Force of Will, and there's an attack for two more. So he we're does going have the other five way. Mana. He, has the, yeah. he can just cast that Force. Brian Braun to win, and Joseph 
Santa Messina are going to game number three, by the way. Mud able to tie things up. Vines to the vast with the draw. You're joking about Tom beating him up, but that's how this game's going to end. I Tom was. is going to put him to zero life points. I was joking. I may not be anymore. There's an attack for two. Puts you down to 15. You did see the factory come to play last turn. Let's make a 14 due to the fetch. Lamb just not respecting the damage plan at all here. Just fetching. Well. Wow. <laughs> it's... I mean, I, I do think it's how, how he may lose this game if he does. I mean, it's, it's definitely within the realm of possibility now. I will say that. Where I didn't think it was before, I do think it is now. Lamb's going to take a look at the graveyard, see what's over there. Again, in Ross's what hand right now, he mean? has an Invigorate. He's got a Vine to the Vastwood and a Force of Will. Wasteland. Yeah. Lamb still has Snapcaster Mage, yep. so he's got to feel pretty confident right now. There's an attack. Invigorate. Couldn't do it fast enough. Oh, he's waiting for this to happen. Snapcaster Mage. Absolutely yeah, not. Yes, because the, Snapcaster would get... Um, well, it would get Sudden Shock. Actually, he'd be able to beat the Sudden Shock, which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, he, can, he can do a couple of things there, but... What's going to happen here is now Lamb is going to get four life back, so he's going up to 17, but Tom leaves him empty-handed. Tom will take a look at the top couple of cards. Noble Hierarch among them. There's also a copy of Become Immense. Oh, look at all this pump. Tom's going to get him good. <laughs> what are you at? Ah, oh, 17. 17 is a lot. You play the Hierarch first. You got to get more exalted. Yeah, three plus six is nine. Plus four is thir three. Three turns. So one, Jeez. two. So three turns. So right now it's six turns, but it's a four-turn clock. Yeah. With Tom thanks to did, Become Immense. Tom also did the check to see how many Pyroclasms are gone. They're all gone. Yeah, one can be Snapcast. That's true. Take a draw. It's the only card that Lamb has in his hand. We don't get a good look at it. Ross is going to activate the library again. Blighted Agent. Oh, does this mean we're not going to win with damage? I'm very disappointed if this is how this ends. I hate to bring the disappointment to you. I'm not quite sure, honestly. I'm not quite sure that Tom is sure if he wants to shift gears. Well, I don't know if Tom wants to put another creature onto the board here, actually. As, as dorky as this Noble Hierarch aggro plan is, is it's going to work. This is going to become immense. It's an attack for nine points of damage. And he's got Lamb down to five life, eight poison. If you can get him just down to two and eight poison, then a, you can finish <laughs> Decimator web him and finish him off both ways at once. <laughs> he makes his move with become immense. He's trying to do this with regular damage. Now here's a Vine to the Vastwood. So that's, that'll put Lamb down to one. Lamb has a Scalding Tarn. That'll shut that off. What's this card? It's just a Wasteland. In hand? For Lamb right now, yes. Well, that's not going to do anything about it. Lamb's going to go to one. He's going to need a Snapcaster, I think. What is that card? What is that card? It's blue. Is it Snapcaster Mage? That's, that's the blue card he needs. Yeah. Oh, Lamb, what is that card? One of them is Wasteland, the other is a mystery. I can't there believe what it. I just saw. Tom Ross wins this match over Lamb Fan, two games to one. Infect is what we call the deck. Infect is typically how it wins. And he just did it with regular damage and about 20 of it. Well, the eight, the eight Infect, that was a ruse. See, that was the distraction. Oh, it's a big trick? Yeah. To get him, to get him that, that way, he, he undervalues your Noble Hierarchs. And then that's where you get him. I don't know how many times he's gotten it done with regular damage, but you can put another notch. Wow. 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 Wow, Tom Ross. <laughs>